Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Nice to connect with you today. I'm going to share with you something that I found on the web. It was a, a post, and so let me read this to you, and then we'll have a conversation about it. It's a really powerful piece about healing and the healing process. But, hmm... It's about the healing process as in healing is a lifestyle choice. If you've heard my work as an intuitive life coach, you know that I believe that healing isn't a one-time thing, an event, or because you're broken and you got to fix something, whether it be your body, your heart, your brain, whatever. Healing is a lifestyle. It is the way that we are in wellness and in love with ourselves and taking care of ourselves. Okay. So that's my little philosophy on a healing. And I think you need to know that stepping into this. <laughs> audio today and so but this this piece in particular this writing gives the understanding about how we evolve and change and how we're always ever evolving and changing and thus we are always healing discovering new levels of ourselves all right you ready get out your journal your whole oh by the way too i should say i do not have a let's see It looks like there's a little bit of a, it's by Jamie Varon, V-A-R-O-N, Jamie Varon. Okay, I just want to make, give credit. Your whole life will be a series of healing. That's how it works. You live, you uncover a layer, you are asked to go deeper, and you sink into a part of you that feels even more true than the person you were a year, a month, a week, a minute before. In many ways, it's about shedding. Shedding what holds you back from experiencing your life as it's happening. Shedding societal conditioning. Shedding walls, blocks. Healing will not be linear. It will not arrive one day in perfect form. It's a becoming, an unraveling, a putting together only to unspool a bit more. Stop trying to be done with the work of becoming yourself. Stop rushing it. You have a lifetime to master it. You're meant to have a, have a lifetime to become, unfold, tense, and unfold again. It all belongs. It's all part of it. Maybe you need a break once in a while, but don't quit becoming truer versions of yourself. You don't have to become better, just truer, more you, more expressed, more free. That is powerful. That is powerful. That's very powerful. Hmm. <clears throat> the becoming and the unraveling, the becoming and the unraveling. It's the state we can go into when we're questioning, we're checking in inside with our lives. Is the question really is about, does my external life express who I am on the inside? And if it is different, if there is discrepancies that cause conflict or confusion or struggle or strife, then there needs to be a realignment. That's what becoming is. Becoming is a form of realignment, of not just allowing yourself to become a better version of yourself, but to become a newer, more truer, like is stated here by this author, a more truer version of yourself. And just as our body changes, look at your hands. Yeah, especially after you get past a certain age, I think like into your 40s, you start to notice your hands have wear on them. You'll, you'll be driving one day and you'll have your hands on the steering wheel, you'll be sitting at a stoplight and you'll bend your wrist just a little bit ever so slightly and you'll notice multiple rings around the edges of your wrist that lead up, by the way, as you get older, in towards your fingertips. And then sooner or later you realize how much those veins on those hands are popping out. And then you might notice a few little freckles 
are those freckles? I've never had freckles before. And then it turns out they're sunspots and they don't fade or go away. And then you notice how much older your hands look because you have changed. It's an evolving process. The process of becoming wiser, becoming more experienced, more seasoned, that is shown to us in our physical human bodies. Instead of outrunning our change in our evolution process, it is really for us to embrace it because it is intended to serve us so that we continue to evolve from the inside out. As a newer version of yourself, a new discovery emerges, you integrate that in and then you can express it outwardly into your human life experience. Now, I recognize that some changes, some evolutions will be deep, profound, and traumatic potentially. If it's a remembering or of, of either a past expression or experience or a future dream or desire. And to my experience, the remembrance of dreams and desires that are held inside or the realization of them when they come out and we finally are, it's revealed to us that we have these dreams and these visions for our future or our lives that we've never really been open to revealing to ourselves and all of a sudden it's there and you're like wait what that's more intense and more traumatic to realize that you've had these dreams and and aspirations and visions for your life that you have never allowed yourself to even see and they're yours it's all about you and it's not about you being self-centered or conceited or screw everybody else it's just all about me it's not about it's not that that's not what this is but it will feel like it because your brain will tell you, it will bring up self-doubt. It will say, you're not all that in a bag of chips. It will say, you'll have feelings from, um, and remembrances from other people saying things to you over time about how not good enough you are and comparing you to other people and, and, and things that mattered to you, like maybe writing mattered to you and you got a bad grade on a writing project or something like that. These things will come up from your mind, it will bring up memories to influence you, to keep you in a place where you aren't able to become more of yourself in a truer form because you can't seem to get into a place where you can allow yourself to even recognize the dreams and desires that are hidden, tucked into a treasure box inside of you. And it's tucked in or hidden in a treasure box inside of you, layered upon resistance so that it's safe and protected for that time when you get to that layer of yourself. You couldn't know these dreams or visions for your future all along because it would have seemed daunting. It would have seemed insurmountable. It's like someone that I, this this is gonna be a stretch for me because I have not trained for a marathon. However, I'm gonna use a running analogy here. It's like someone training for a marathon who's never run, like someone like me, for example, That's not totally true. I did a 5K once about eight years ago. 5K, like three and a half miles, right? But the point is, is if I wanted to run a marathon, I would have to begin to train. I would have to do strength training and cross training and running, not just running, but these other things to have a whole body prepared for this run, for this marathon experience for this ultimate goal of achieving and finishing and completing that marathon experience, but I would have to prepare for it. But in order to prepare for it and even start to begin to work toward that, I have to have this connection to that goal, that vision of of an experience, of what it would feel like and be like a dream to run the marathon a dream to be at the finish line and feel the exhilaration of the emotion of the moments that led me to get there and this incredible sense of of accomplishment, of arrival. Now I know, I know we talk a lot about how things aren't always based on an outcome. And in fact, life is really about the journey, not the outcome, because the outcome of life is death. If you are living in a human body, the body expires. Sooner or later, the body will expire. And so therefore, life isn't about the outcome of it, the ultimate outcome, because the outcome is the transition point of death, right? So, and we're all gonna get there. It's just a fact. It is literally a fact. 
The how you get there, however, is completely up for negotiation discussion and it is your actions, your behaviors, your routines, your, your choices that result in the how you live it. So yes, there is a lot to unpack here. There is a lot to understand about life itself and life as a whole. The energy of becoming is very powerful. It can be overwhelming. There's, it's filled with unknown, but it is a necessary part of fully living. If you want to fully live embodied with the awareness of dreams and desires that you have, with a connection to a deeper, richer life experience, then you have to allow yourself to practice being open to being in those uncomfortable places while you have these discoveries or awarenesses about yourself. Like the author mentions, the the becoming and the the unraveling of things. So it's kind of like a series of arrivals of, of a feeling of, of it's, it's literally like, you know what it's like? It's like breathing. It's like the in breath and the out breath and the in breath and the out breath. And it's kind of like the tension that you can hold in your chest and the heart space and not even realizing that you're holding your breath when you're working or when you're at a meeting or when you're at a bus stop or when you're at a stoplight and you realize, oh my gosh, I'm holding my chest, the air tight in my chest and I'm limiting my own personal ability to receive the air, the life affirming life element of air. So then you let, let your body relax a little and then Breathe in deeply and fully and expand the lungs. It's like that contraction and expansion, the contraction and the expansion. It's like the squeeze that comes, that feeling of being, oh, that awareness of a, of a tense muscle in the body. And so recognizing, oh, this is tenseness. Recognizing, oh, this is resistance. Recognizing, oh, this is another place where I have another discovery. And instead of judging the resistance or the tenseness or being frustrated about how uncomfortable it is, recognize that this discomfort is causing you to ask, which is getting your attention, which then that notification becomes something you can do something about. You have information, you have insight, your body is extremely and highly intuitive and it will share that information with you. You might gain it in a meditation. You might get it from a physical sore neck or sore part of your back pay attention to where you are sore in your physical body i should mention this is important because it is connected to your chakras and the chakras are the energy centers inside the body and it can give you insight as to where that treasure the next layer of your becoming is housed because your body is the embodiment that holds the soul of you and all of your wisdom and we forget that. So as you are becoming newer versions of yourself, as your body is literally getting wiser and showing you the experience and the seasons you have had, <laughs> it is showing you that you are well qualified to live this life, to become more, not because you're not enough, but to become more, to discover more unique, creative ways, interesting, dynamic, adventurous ways to be yourself and expression. And sometimes those things are scary. The things that reveal to you mean big changes external. And guess what? That's okay. That is a natural part of life. There is nothing wrong with you. That is a natural flow to this life journey. So I guess for me, the word becoming stands out in this reading. Let's read it one more time so that you have um, a little bit of an insight here. So grab your journal, see what word stands out to you. So for me, becoming, ooh, here's another word, shedding. Oh my gosh, shedding and clearing. Oh, that's a good one. We could do a whole Sunday morning coffee about that, couldn't we? Here we go, ready? Your whole life will be a series of healing. That's how it works. You live, you uncover a layer. You are asked to go deeper and you sink into a part of you that feels more true than the person you were a year, a month, a week, a minute before. 
in many ways, it's about shedding. Shedding what holds you back from experiencing your life as it's happening. Shedding societal conditioning, shedding walls, blocks. Healing will not be linear. Oh, that's a good one. Healing will not be linear. It will not arrive one day in a perfect form. It's a becoming. It's a becoming and unraveling, a putting together only to unspool a bit more. Stop trying to be done with the work of becoming yourself. Stop rushing it. You have a lifetime to master it. You're meant to have a lifetime to become unfold, tense and unfold again. It all belongs. It's all part of it. Maybe you need a break once in a while, but don't quit becoming truer versions of yourself. You don't have to become better, just truer, more you, more expressed, more free. Again, this is by Jamie Varon. This is Bridget. Thanks so much for listening to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. It is my pleasure to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope on this Sunday morning podcast here at Above Life Channel. Be sure to watch Above Life Channel on Mondays for insights from great great uh, channeling sessions that I have weekly as a psychic medium with afterlife celebrity guests. Also, you can follow me on more of my intuitive vlogging channel, which is Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. I do some teaching there um, about things intuitive. I also share about my very real psychic life there. I do have a vlog there as well. Again, that's Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. Thanks for being here.